We want to say greetings to everyone and thank you all for joining us today. My name is Brother Hawk Bolden and as usual, we're glad to bring you the things that the Lord have laid on our hearts to share with you this day. So if you have your Bibles, let's go to the third chapter of the book of Revelation. Uh, we want to uh, discuss some things, uh, continue to discuss um, this Laodicean church age and the 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 uh, how God said it is a lukewarm church. And uh, we think that's very important that you understand what all comes with being lukewarm. Now, I'm sure most most people who read this and who are in, uh, have studied the Bible in the past may know that the Word of God talks about being lukewarm, but may not understand what all lukewarm means, you see, what it all means. And so, if you have your Bibles, we're going to go back to the third chapter of the book of Revelation, and we're going to... Um, we're going to start reading at verse 14. It says, And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, <clears throat> These things said the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot now. This is actually... Not just talking about a church that was in that time, but this is also talking about this church age, the age that we're living in now. You see that? He said that you, I know your works. You see that? That you're neither cold nor hot. In other words, you're not on one side or the other. And there's so many uh, situations like that, especially with politics. People playing politics, trying to be politically correct. But this says... Jesus is saying, I know your works, that you're neither cold nor hot. You're not on one side or the other. You don't know how to stand for the truth, and you don't know how to be completely sold out to the other side either. Let's go ahead and keep reading. Look at what he says. I would thou were cold or hot. In other words, I wish that you was one way or the other. Now, this is we're in the third chapter of the book of Revelation. Let's keep reading. Verse 16 says, So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Now, when if you want to think about a group of people that were this way in his day, in Jesus' day when he lived in this earth, uh, you can look at the Pharisees. They were lukewarm. They weren't completely sold out to God because when God came in flesh, they didn't recognize him. And at the same time, they were not completely in the world, you know, outwardly, I guess you could say, because they were still religious. You see that? And so we know what happened with them. Most of them could not believe. When God showed up, they didn't know him. And that's what takes place. Uh, and that's one of the main traits of lukewarm people. When God shows up, they don't know him. When God is preaching, they don't know him. A sinner that's living out in the world, when when the Lord speaks to a preacher, they'll at least recognize it. They'll know the difference. But somebody that's lukewarm, they have a form of godliness. But they don't know God when he's talking. Let's go ahead and keep reading. Let's go ahead and keep reading. Verse 17 says, Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. You see that? Now, again, that's a dangerous position to be in. That's a dangerous place to be in is when you uh, have this world's riches and goods and things like that. And it gives you a sense of false security. And that is another trait of being lukewarm is people have a sense <clears throat> of false security. You see that? And that's something that the Lord don't want us to have. I, I, now, don't get me wrong. The Lord want us to have security and to know that we are secure, but he want us to know we are secure in him. And not within our own selves, not because of the kind of money we make, not because of our social status or whatever the case may be. Uh, God want us to know that our security is in him. And we can be secure in him, but that means we have to be in him completely. You see that? Verse 17, because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not. In other words, you don't know that you are blind, that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Everybody see that? Now look at what he says that, that these people were poor and blind. 
What, what is he talking about? Rich may be according to the world standards, but poor when it comes to the things of God. What did the Lord say? Cast not your pearls before swine. What does pearl represent? Something of value. Something of value from the Lord. You see that? And so what is he talking about? These treasures, these things that God, these nuggets that God drop in our spirit, that's what makes us rich in him. The word of God living on the inside of us is what makes us rich, not, you know, uh, the things of the world. And unfortunately, many people equate riches of the world with having faith and having, you know, and, and things like that. But none of these things mean anything if you don't have anything in the Lord, if you don't, if you're not rich towards God. If, if God isn't speaking to you, if God isn't dealing with you, God wants you to be rich towards him. You see that? He wants you to be rich towards him. So he's telling these people that they don't know that they are wretched. In other words, wicked. They are miserable. And that, that, now that's really a miserable person. When a person is miserable and don't know that they're miserable. You see that? And we went over that yesterday. He says, and poor and blind and naked. So today, if the Lord will, we're going to talk about the blindness. So if you have your Bibles, let's go real quick to the book of John. Uh, I want to say it's the ninth chapter of the book of John. <clears throat> the ninth chapter of the book of John and we're going to start reading at verse 1 it says and as Jesus passed by he saw a man which was blind from his birth now the truth be told this is the condition of every person that's born into this world Every person that's born into this world is born spiritually blind. Now, I won't. So while we're talking about this natural blindness of this man, the Lord wants you to think along uh, the lines of spiritual blindness. So let's go ahead and keep reading. He was blind from his birth. Let's go ahead and keep reading. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Now, that's kind of a silly question if you think about it. They asked who did sin. This man or his parents. Now, they hadn't really shouldn't have, if they'd have known anything, they should have known that the man could not have sinned before he was born. So if he was born blind, it couldn't have been anything that he had done. You see that? But they had, at least they had enough sense to know that sometimes parents bring about things upon their children, especially when you're talking about generational curses. And you want to know what kind of demons you have to deal with? Just look at your parents. You see that? Look at them and maybe sit down and talk with them about the life that they lived before they got saved, you know, and things. And it'll help you to understand a little bit better about what you're dealing with. Because you don't even, you may not have even been born before, you know, uh, before, um, during the time of your parents' salvation. But there's a such thing as generational curses. You see that? And, and, and that's one of the things. And so we have a lot of children walking around with rebellion on the inside of them with all of these things going on. And some of it is due to their parents, which is why their parents, after the parents get saved, need to really inform the children of what they are dealing with and how they dealt with it. But a lot of parents just rather keep it hush-hush and make their children think that they were always saved and nothing was, they never had to deal with anything. But I think that it's very important that parents share what they have gone through, and how God have given them the victory over it. You see that? I think that's very important. So let's go ahead and keep reading. Verse 3, Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned, nor his parents, but the, that the works of God should be made manifest in him. And so that right there shows us that there are some people who are in uh, different conditions, that have different conditions, not because they've sinned, but because God goes God is going to come along and heal them at some point and is to show God's work manifest in them. So let's go ahead and keep reading. Verse 4, he says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. 
As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And so what is the Lord saying? This goes along with what he was talking about concerning the blindness. He said, look at what he says, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Now, why is that so significant concerning being blind? And now we're talking about spiritual blindness. Because if naturally so, Jesus said he's the light of the world. And so at nighttime, when you wake up and all your lights are off in the house and you're in complete darkness, there's no daylight outside whatsoever, you know what? You're just as blind. It doesn't matter how you can see, how good your vision is. You can have 20-20 vision. You're just as blind and walking in darkness, naturally so, as somebody who can't see with their natural eyes. You're just as blind until the light come on. You're in the same state until that light come on. And Jesus said, as long as I am the world, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. That means for the world to see today, for the world to come out of that blindness and have some kind of sight, Jesus Christ have to be made manifest through his body today, which is the body of Christ. He have to be made manifest. So if I go to a church that Jesus Christ is not a part of, where the word isn't being taught to bring about spiritual light. Then I'm going to still walk in blindness. And what happens is, so think about this. If you were out in the world walking in darkness. And you go to a church that's not going to challenge you. That's just going to appease your flesh. That's just going to uh, uh, compromise the truth so that your flesh is comfortable. That means you're still walking in darkness. If you haven't changed your mind about the worldly things that you were in when you were out in the world, you're still blind. I don't care how many times a week you go to church. If you can't see the difference in your life, if you can't see the devil clearly, oh, okay, I can see how watching this type of movie was wrong. Or I can see how listening to this type of music was wrong. If the, if the Lord haven't opened your eyes to that, I can see how hanging with certain type of people was wrong. If God haven't opened your eyes to those things, the things that you were doing when you were out in the world, it means that you're blind. But you know what? Today, many believers, uh, many so-called believers, I should say, what they do is they, so, they think that they have an experience with God. They think that they are saved. And so, but they're still walking the same walk they were walking before they were saved. The only difference is now they're going to church and thinking that grace is covering it. And the Lord is saying that you're blind. You're lukewarm. You're not on one side of the fence or the other. You're confused is really what it is. You're really just confused. God wants you to come out of that darkness. When he calls you out of darkness <clears throat> into his marvelous light, that means that you can see clearly now things the way that they really are spiritually. Now you're going to have a problem with sitting across the table eating with certain people who are living as if there is no God. Now it's going to irk you to watch movies that's laced with profanity. Now it's going to grieve you. You see that? To hear certain types of music. Or to see people mistreat one another. Those things are going to grieve you. Why? Because your eyes have been opened. And you can see clearly now how the devil is functioning. Whereas before you couldn't see it. You just thought that was just, you know, that's just your taste in music. You just thought, well, if I get along with people, I can, you know, I can deal with them. It's not about getting along. It's about coming out from among them and being separate and touching not the unclean thing. You see that? All right. So Jesus said, verse 5, As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the man, of the blind man, with the clay and said unto him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. 
He went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. So the Lord healed the man of his blindness. And that's what the Lord will do for you when you come to him wanting to be pulled out of darkness. In other words, the things that this man could not see before, now he could see clearly. So now let's jump down um, uh, to verse 35 in the ninth chapter of the book of John. So let me tell you what happened in between time, in between this. After he was healed, um, he came across the, the folks that were the, the rulers of the temple and the synagogue. And they were asking him, how, did, how was he made whole? Because they understood that he was born blind. And they asked his parents as well. And, and the man was saying, I, a man named Jesus healed me. And so they, they asked his parents, is this your son? Is this the man that was born blind? They said, yeah. They said, well, how was he made whole? And they said, well, he's grown. Ask him. He could tell you. And what it was, they understood that, the, the, of course, back then, that if you uh, name the name of Jesus Christ, you would get put out of the synagogue. You wouldn't be allowed to go to church. And, of course, at that time, they felt like you would lose your salvation. If you name the name of Jesus Christ, and it's pretty much the same thing today, uh, he preaches, most godly preachers are not allowed in a lot of these churches today because they don't want to disturb anybody. You see that? They just want people to continue to live the way that they've uh, been living. So, let's go ahead and read verse 35. It says, Jesus heard that they had cast him out, talking about out of the synagogue, <clears throat> and when he had found him, he said unto him, Does thou believe on the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. And Jesus said, For judgment I am come into this world, that they which see not might see, and, they, and that they which see might be made blind. In other words, if you realize when you come to the Lord that you're blind, God will open your eyes. But if you're one of those people that think, I grew up in church and, you know, I already know the Lord and, and all this and that, God, the Lord's saying, because you think you see, I'll make you blind. In other words, because you don't see that you need help from me, for me to open your eyes, you'll be worse off than you were before. You'll be spiritually blind. And I'm telling you, so many people like that grew up in church, and they have a form of godliness, and they, and they, and, but they can't tell you what God is doing, you know, in today's age, today's world. It's just I go to church, thank the Lord, and then Monday through Saturday, I, I'm living like the devil. I'm the same old devil I was, you know, have always been, I should say. So let's read that scripture again, verse 39. And Jesus said, For judgment I am come into this world, that they which see not might see, and that they which see may be made blind. Verse 40. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? Now, that was the wrong thing to ask. Let's go ahead and keep reading verse 41. And Jesus said unto them, If ye were blind, you should have no sin. But now ye say, We see, therefore your sin remaineth. Now you see how when he's talking about blindness, in actuality, in actuality he's talking about sin. And so what is he saying? Let's read that. Jesus said unto them, If ye were blind, you should have no sin. In other words, if you had come to me with humility, in other words, is what he's talking about. If you would acknowledge <coughs> that you were a sinner that needed to be saved, I would take your sins away. But because you can't even acknowledge that you need me to remove sin from your life. In other words, you can't acknowledge that you are helpless without me. You remain in the state that you're in. So, that brings us to another thing about the lukewarm church. What does lukewarm represent? So-called believers who are living in sin, who see absolutely nothing wrong with living in sin. In other words, they're still walking in blindness. Why? When you make an excuse, what would this blind man naturally, so this blind man that the Lord had just healed here 
in the ninth chapter of the book of John. What if the Lord had come to him trying to heal him and he said, oh, no, that's okay. I, I'm, I'm good just the way that I am. I don't need to be healed. I, I've learned to get along exactly the way I get along. God's grace is sufficient for me. So I got this walking stick. I got a, a CNI dog. I got it all. But you know, and, and so he would have been silly to think that way. What blind person don't want to be healed? Naturally so. But you know, spiritually so, this world is full of blind people. Folks that are sitting in church every week who are telling God, your grace covers my blindness. Yeah, I'm blind. I, hey, I'm a blind person saved by grace. In other words, I'm a sinner saved by grace. But won't come to the Lord to remove that sin, to remove that blindness. You're in a terrible condition when you have gotten satisfied with your sinful condition. And God does not want you to be satisfied with that, that old nature. Allow him to come in and change that nature so that your eyes can see clearly what the devil is doing so that you'll at least know how to combat that devil. Amen. We want to say thank you all for joining us today. We pray that something was said that have been a blessing to you, and we pray that you will continue to listen in to this broadcast. Have a blessed day.